I want you to turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. It's been a long time in coming, saints. That, uh, I'm, I've been looking forward to this day of coming up and sharing the Word of God again. As a reference, we're going to be reading out of the New King James Version today, so it might seem uh, a little bit different. Actually, I have in front of me the New Living, but what's going to be on the screen is the New King James. That might be confusing, but that's just the way it fell out. First and foremost, I want to thank Pastor Chris for the privilege of allowing me to share the Word of God with New Life Church. Uh, I think Pastor Chris is doing an awesome job. Amen. Amen. The amount of maturity that the Lord has given him in such a short period of time is actually amazing. Yes. But he has grown in and, and about halfway through the process from January to now so about you know three, four months ago, he come up and he was sharing something with me and there was more freedom there. And I said, you know what's happening, don't you? He said, what's that? I said, the mantle's no longer rubbing blisters on your shoulder. Amen. It's starting to settle in. Yes. And I like it. I love to see God do what he's doing. Amen? Yes. How many of y'all came to the Word of God today? Y'all ready? Amen. Some of the greatest detriments to the body of Christ today is indecision, apathy, and complacency. And the biggest one is way too much focus on self. In fact, all the rest of those are encompassed with self. We get apathetic, we get indecisive, we get complacent because we're focused on self and how life affects us. Can I hear a better amen? amen. I want you to notice, I'm speaking to the body of Christ today. Amen. So this is directed to you in particular and in practicality. It was never God's intention for the redeemed to live as though they were not redeemed. Amen. You're right. That was never God's intention. That's, that's correct. We were redeemed from our lives being totally absorbed by ourselves. Whoa. Whatever y'all found, y'all found it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We were redeemed from our lives being totally absorbed with ourselves to a life that was centered on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes. So we were redeemed from making it about us to making it about Him. Amen. That's God's plan. Yes. How do we end up always still making it all about us? Amen. Philippians 3, 8 and 9 says this. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I can gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ for God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. It's not your hand. That make you right with God. It's trusting that He made the way for you. That's the difference between religion and relationship. I know y'all heard me speak many times on that. Yes, we each have our own lives to live. But when we are living our lives before we get accepted Christ, we would only make decisions based on our thoughts and our feelings and what we wanted. Because we had no other choice. Y'all realize before you got saved, you didn't have a choice. And so you would ask everybody else what their opinion was, and, and should I do this? And then you would do what they do or what they tell you to do when you don't know what to do. But when you gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, it no longer became about what do I need to do, it's what do you want me to do. Then His passion becomes your desire. When God revealed Jesus to you and opened up your heart to salvation, Jesus becomes Lord and everything changes. Amen. Did everything change for you when you got saved? Yes. Yes. Oh, I want us to be alive this morning. Yes. 
Did everything change for you when you got saved? I don't know about you, but everything changed for me. Absolutely everything. Now we get to live for something greater than ourselves. We get to live according to the promises of heaven while we're yet living on the earth. How awesome. Not only are we free from the bondage of sin, we get to see others set free. So when God saves you, it doesn't stop there. That freedom and that salvation moves through you into the lives of those around you who were living just like you before you got saved. This is both the joy of life and the warfare. Because Satan, the enemy of both us and God, wants to steal this joy from our lives. He wants to kill our faith and eventually destroy us and our witness for the Lord Jesus. Have y'all noticed that? Yes, yes, yes. So the lost, while they say, I don't want nothing to do with that, they are watching you with binoculars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah! You made a mistake. But you know what? I, I want to help everybody. You're going to make a mistake as a Christian. But then you repent and you get up, you go to a Father whose mercies are new every morning. Amen. Father, forgive me in Jesus' name and He washes what and gives you a brand new day. Amen. That's something the lost can't have. Because in their mind, God's a holy God. He's going to make a mistake. He's going to try and survive and try. I might have just been speaking to some believers in the house. Yeah, that's right. That's not how God is. Satan's most effective weapon is simple but accurate. He wants you to get you, you to focus on yourself. The devil wants you to see your own lack of abilities, lack of gifting, lack of charisma, your appearance, your past mistakes, and your potential future failures. As long as he can get you to focus on your lack, whatever it might be, you are not focused on the power When he gets you to look at yourself, you can't see Christ. Look at my face. When I'm looking here, I'm not looking at him. Amen. Amen. And so his whole goal is, what about you and your pain and your suffering and your this and your that? You can't put your eyes on Christ. Amen. Somebody's going to get a word today. Amen. Today we're going to right this ship. And I believe the body of Christ can live in a way that honors the Lord Jesus. Today, I believe weak knees are going to be bolstered. Today, weak hearts are going to be strengthened. Today, the least of us can be equipped to chase a thousand. Amen. I want to know if somebody's here for the word of God today. Amen. The title of this message is, Let the Lion Roar. We're in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. We're going to read the whole entire chapter, so back down the hatch. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much. Because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls, full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll, and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. 
and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Hallelujah. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the power and the anointing of your spirit on this service today. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. And amen. I want to know, saints, who is worshiping? Come on, who is worthy? Lord Jesus. Worthy. We are reading in the Revelation today. And I need to do this per periodically. This is not the Revelations. Nope. Who he is. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. This book is not as much about the seal and the trumpet and the beast as much as it is about the one who all of those are subject to. Hallelujah. Even John, who was a disciple Jesus loved. Who was closer to Jesus than John? In the natural. He, John had seen Jesus doing the miracles. He, seen every, he saw Jesus crucified. He saw him raised. Hmm. Even this John, when he saw Jesus in his fullness, fell as a dead man. He saw Jesus in all of the three and a half years of his ministry. But when he saw him in the fullness of his glory, he fell like a dead man. Who can stand for the King of kings and the Lord of lords? He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's all our righteousness and we add nothing to him. He is the gospel. He is the power of God and the salvation. He's Alpha and Omega. He's healing. He's peace. He's deliverance. Amen. He is triumph and everything looks bleak. He's comfort when pain is coming from every direction. He is Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. John knew these things personally and even through experience. But when he saw the fullness, I think somebody in the room needs to start seeing Jesus for who he really is. Amen. Not the Jesus you portrayed in your mind or has been portrayed to you by someone else, but for who he really is. So here's John, the writer of this, this book in the Revelation. John is in the throne room of the Almighty. I'm going to set the scene. The 24 elders are there, the heavenly court, the angels, all of heaven is on the scene. And there's God sitting on the throne. And he has a scroll in his right hand. And it has seven seals. And we'll get to that in a minute. And then a strong angel. Not just an average angel. Nope. You know the word of God doesn't play games. The word of God is accurate. And the word says a strong angel. He got up and he proclaims. And I want us to understand that it's written in such a way is he's not just asking a question who's worthy to take the scroll and open the seal. That's how he was doing. He's issuing a challenge. Amen. This strong angel stands up before all of earth, everyone that's already gone, and everything that's under, in other words, all the heavens, past and future, and he's laying out a challenge. Who is worthy? Who, from the beginning of time to the end of time, who has ever been worthy? Who ever will be worthy? Yeah. I want to tell you, Saint, Satan heard that challenge. 
kept his mouth shut. Yeah. There was none worthy. Who's worthy? None. He's making that declaration and not anyone past, present, or future. No one in the heavens. Everyone, no one can answer the call. So verse 5 said, one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Because y'all can imagine. Here's John and those, something's in them scrolls. And all the heaven wants to know what's there. The elders want to know what they can't do. The strong angel wants to know. And John begins to weep because no one can open it. Here's where we just follow the Holy Ghost. God, I don't know what my future holds. Who can show me? Who can lead me? And when you can't find anyone, you weep in desperation. Who is worthy to unlock my future? And here is the Lamb. That was slain. He's the only one worthy to take what's already written in the right hand of God and reveal it. I believe the kingdom stepped up in the room. One of the elders do said to me, do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Has what? Has what? Has <laughs> what? Has prevailed. Prevailed. He has prevailed. He's the lamb that was slain, yet the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus was the lamb before mankind. But even though he was a lamb, he was a lion in the heavenlies. Jesus is the only one worthy to take the scroll from the hand of God. And here's where we get into the crust of the matter. Why was he worthy? Just because he was the son of God? Think about it. Why was Jesus worthy? The word says that Jesus had prevailed. To open the scrolls and loose its seals. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. Jesus prevailed because he was able to make everything in his life about someone who was greater than him. About a purpose greater than his own desires. About living in such a way to overcome the attacks of Satan. Trying to get him to focus on his own life, his own purpose, his own desires. And he prevailed and said, no, it's not about me. I come to please the one who sent me. Amen. I'll make it about him. And Satan threw everything he had at him. But Jesus prevailed. Amen. Someone might be thinking that this is this eventually costed him his life. The reality is, because of his father's cause, his father's great love for you. His father had a greater purpose than the pleasure of his son. Is there anybody still in here this morning? God had a greater cause than fulfilling the desires of his own son. Jesus laid down his life so you could be set free. Yes, thank you, Lord. He overcame the attacks of pride when the people tried to make him an earthly king. Yes. He overcame the attacks of being high minded. So instead, he ate with sinners, mingled with the lower caste and the outcast, though he was the Son of God. Is anybody still here? Yes. He overcame the attacks of being self absorbed when Satan moved on him. To be questioned by his own family. Y'all yeah. do realize that. Yeah. In the, in, when he turned the water into wine at the, the wedding of Canaan. They said, why don't you go? Because anybody wants to be revealed to the whole world. They don't hide in the whole Why don't you go over there? Come on, that's what you want to do. And the scripture goes on to say, because his brothers didn't even believe in him. But he wasn't moved. Hebrews 4.15 for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He prevailed. 
Jesus prevailed even to the death of the cross, rose from the grave, and now is the only person in history, past history, future history, who is worthy to take the scroll out of the hand and loose its seals. And I just want to do a little side note here. That scroll had seven seals. I want to read it. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven eyes and seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. It took the only one who ever existed in the fullness of the Spirit, and all the seven spirits of the Lord was in him. I want to read that. It's found in Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 5. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and Spirit of might, and the Spirit of knowledge and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. I want you all to hear this. How did Jesus prevail? His delight was in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall... Y'all, that's the word of God. Amen. He shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Saints, I want to propose to you today that it took somebody filled with the seven spirits of the Lord to open the seven seals that were on the scroll. Amen. His name is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Can we say his name this morning? Jesus. Oh, come on, Jesus. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! That's who he is. Worthy. Jesus is worthy because he prevailed over every single attempt to yes. get him distracted with something else. Yes. It was his pleasure to make it all about the will of his father because he trusted his father. This word came out several weeks ago in prayer. When we do not trust the Lord, we believe that we have options and we do not. Because when we believe we have options, we chase after those options. And every time they fail, and we end up going back to the Lord all over again. Amen. So saints, it's time to let the lion roar. Amen. Do not allow the devil to get you so caught up in who you are and your inabilities and your lack and your fears and your failings. Christianity is not about us. It's about the one who rescued us. Amen. The devil wants you to believe that you cannot share Jesus with people because you don't know enough scripture. How many of y'all have ever been in that boat? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know enough. I, I, okay. So you say, I'm not going to share Jesus with somebody because of me. Look how well Satan works. It's accurate. Because you always have the tendency to say the wrong thing. Because you're intimidated by people with strong personalities because of you, because of you, because of you. Jesus didn't do this. He simply kept referring everything to His Father. I only say what He tells me to say. I only go where He tells me to go. I only do what He tells me to do. You say, but we have a free will. Jesus prevailed over His will. I come to do the will of Him who sent me. Yes. Quit buying into the trap of Satan. Making everything about you. You give your life to Christ. It ain't about you anymore. All of a sudden, you got something to live for that's greater than you. <laughs> Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. Even as simple as it might seem, the name and person of Jesus causes every spiritual need to bow. Yes. 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 
the elders that are in heaven, sitting around the throne of God, bow before the lion of the tribe of Judah. Do y'all believe that? Everybody say, Jesus! 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 This same lion of the tribe of Judah lives in you. We got to let him roar. Amen. Because the kingdom of darkness knows who he is. Yes. You say, but Pastor Lane, I know who I am. That's the problem. <laughs> you are measuring your authority in the heavenly realm by who you are. It ain't about you, it's about the lion of the tribe of Amen. Judah. Let him roar. Not you. Every human being is spiritual. I know we can't grab that, maybe some of us. But we are spiritual beings. Let me tell you something. The scripture says when we're walking in our life and we're born again, our name's written in heaven, we've accepted Christ our Savior, his son's blood covers our sin. Come on, y'all. When we leave this world, we stand before Him. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. And we will be with Him forever. So your spirit, your soul does not die. This does. And the older you get, the more you realize how frail you really are. I've been in traction this past week with my back. All right? It, the, the older we get, the more frail we really are. But I know inside of me, I'm alive. Amen. We long for the day, the scripture says, when our mortality gets swallowed by yeah, life. Not death. Life. We ain't there yet, but we're getting there. We're spiritual beings. And when we realize that, we start living with the spiritual mindset instead of the natural one. It's not just what we say and what we do. It's how we trust and allow Him to say and do. When we do, the heavenlies recognize that. So when you go up to the devil and you say, you better leave me alone, the devil goes, <laughs> do you even believe this? Just ask the seven sons of Sceva. When they tried to cast those demons out and they said, we cast you out by the name of Jesus. And the demon said, Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. Who are you? <laughs> Who do you think you are? You don't have the power to stand up against me. The difference with Paul and Peter and those and you, if you get this, is that you know who's on the inside. Uh -huh. yes. And when you let him out in the spiritual realm, they have no choice. They have no choice. You say, but Pastor Lane, I, I'm still struggling. I still don't know. I think we need to grab something. And the best way to do it is take a cartoon. <laughs> I'm serious. I got a little cartoon skit I want to play for y'all. And I want to show y'all what spiritual authority is. And I believe somebody's going to get free today. Yeah. Go ahead and play it, Tom. <laughs> I believe you do. The enemy's just been hiding it from you. 
Because he doesn't want you to know the truth. Oh, I said he does not want you to know the truth. Mm. You wouldn't know my computer would lock up right there. But I'm fine with it. So the next time the devil says, you're going to starve. Let the line of the child that you roar. My father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And he knows how to provide for his own. The next time the devil says this sickness is going to kill you. Amen. You let the line of the tribe of Judah speak to that, that religious hyena and say, by his stripes, I was healed. Come on, God. You let the line of the tribe of Judah stand up. You stand on the word. When the devil says, we're going to take you out. Oh, yeah? When the line of the tribe of Judah said, I made the blacksmith who makes weapons formed for destruction. And I say unto you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. When you let the word begin to come up, the line roar and the kingdom of darkness bows. And all of a sudden, something happens on the inside. It's not about me. It's about my king. And I'm not going to run anymore. I'm not going to run when it comes to my marriage. I'm not going to run when it comes to my finances. I'm not going to run when it comes to my kids. I'm going to take the Word of God and I'm going to allow my king to roar. And I'm going to watch the kingdom of darkness say, I didn't know that was your son. Amen. You lying thing. You come back around again. And I'm going to teach him how to let you. I'm going to teach them how to let me see. I'm going to teach my daughters how to trust me as a father. So that my daughters can walk in the stately stride of a daughter of the king. You might have been raised with no money. You might have been raised in swallow. It doesn't matter if you accept Jesus Christ. You are a daughter of the living God. You don't have to back up anymore. It doesn't matter what they say. Did y'all see those hyenas? Do it again. It's so funny. That's all right. If they take me to court, in the spiritual court, and they say, what is your plea? We have all these accusations against you. What is your plea? I'm simply going to say, I plead the blood of Jesus. That is my plea. It's not guilt. It's not innocence. I plead the blood. It will stand up in the spiritual courtroom. I'm not pleading for the blood like it's way out there. That is my plea. He covers me. Saints, when we grab this, we start living as children of the Most High God. Men, when your wives seem like the weaker vessel and they're afraid and they're struggling and they're questioning everything else, you are supposed to understand them <coughs> and take on your rightful position and cover them anyway and carry them anyway. Amen. Ladies, you no longer have to carry your men when they see themselves as sons of the living God. Yes. Man, we need to learn how to let the lion of the tribe of Judah be the king in our home. Amen. Are we grabbing something today? Yes, sir. I hear you. When we grab this, we take the word of God and we pray according to his word back to him. Satan doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to get all emotional. He wants you to pray from the emotion. Surely God, you know how much you've hurt. You know how great I am. Surely God, I don't know why you're letting this happen to me. And the devil's going, yeah, that's right. Just keep praying like that, man. Just, you are so awesome. Just don't let the line of the tribe of Judah. You say, Pastor Lane, wait a minute. You're saying don't let the line of the tribe of Judah roar. <laughs> it's spoken and it's established. He is the Word. Yes. He is the Word. 
Yes. And when we understand it and believe it enough to allow it to start coming out, it roars in the heaven. Yes. And on earth. You see, Satan is a liar, y'all. He's wanting to get you to make it about you. I'm not cutting you down. I'm just trying to open your eyes to see the warfare. He's trying to get you to make it about you. Your tomorrow, your future, your peace, your mind, your self-worth, all of those things. He just, yeah, make it all about that. And, and then go to church and learn how to say hallelujah and sing and clap your hands, maybe dance a little. Oh, and you might even tie. Now you really something. Just make it all about you so I can keep you from making it about the king. Because if you ever start making it about the line of the tribe of Judah, those hyenas beg for mercy. Yeah. How many of us want this in our lives? Yeah. Saints, we got to make up our mind. We're going to let the line of the tribe of Judah roar. Are we grabbing this this morning? Now as they come to prepare for the end of this service, I want everyone to bow your head.